course I would. So, let's have a chit chat about this question because this question, when you look at it, it's pretty darn easy, isn't it? I gotta paint the walls. I gotta find the surface area of the walls. No problem. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. No. Nina. Well, Nino has drawn or hit upon the first problem. Gallon, square feet, imperial and imperial, no problem. In the real world, of course, you would have measured this room in imperial because that's how we measure stuff, right? Right? But this is not the real world. This is math class, isn't it? So your math teacher gave you the dimensions of the room in metric because he's a bit of a dink. But that's okay because you know how to do it. Sam? Pardon me? You can keep the gallon and change the square hundred feet to meters, but you're going to have done it wrong. I bet. If I were a betting man, I would bet that you did it wrong. Not because you don't know how to do it, but because you're going to not think about what you're actually doing. And I'm going to talk to that in a moment. Okay? Now, the first thing we have to talk about is if we are going to paint this room, we must decide what indeed we are painting. Yes? That was the first problem. What part of a room do you paint? The walls. Excellent. Any other part of the room? Sometimes the ceiling, but never what? Excellent. Good. So, floors don't get painted. Floors get floors put on them. Huh? What, wood floors? Regardless, the point, TJ, is that Indeed, the question was ambiguous, wasn't it? Right? Yes. Your answer will depend on what work you did, right? Because once again, as I have said a thousand times, do I care what the math you do is? No. As long as you can justify it, I'm okay with it. So TJ could say, well, Mr. Myers, I'm going to paint all four walls and the ceiling and the floor because that's not what this question is about. This question is not about TJ finding one, two, three, four, five, six areas, is it? Because he's in the 10th grade, and if he can't find six areas of regular rectangles, he shouldn't be here, should he? No. So this question was not about where you found the area. This question was more about what you had to do with those numbers. Yes? So let's do this the easiest way possible. Oops, that was a bad top line. There is my room, agreed? And the floor is this dotted line back here, yes? How big is that floor? Well, it is 4.1 by 5.3. Does everybody understand that part? Excellent. And the walls are three meters tall, yes? Everybody's cool to there? Okay. And when we paint, if we're going to do the basic, basic thing and not have to get into a lawyer ball argument, we would paint that wall how many times? Twice, because there's two of them. How much would we paint this wall? Twice, because there's two of them. Does everyone agree to there? Yes. Excellent. And once you have done that number, you will be given meters squared, won't you? But your paint is in square feet, isn't it? So we have to do some conversions. Now, here's where the problem happens. Should I convert 5.3 and 4.1 and 3 to feet? 
or do I convert 5.3 times 3, which is 15.9, times 2, which is 31.8, and then 4.1 times 3, which is 12.3, times 2, times 3, times 2, to get 24.6. Add them up to get 4, 55.4, meters squared. Should I convert that to feet? When do I do my conversion? At the end. At the end? So right now you want to convert. Because we're done. That's our surface area, right? That's what we need to paint. So we need to figure out that in square feet, don't we? How do we do that? How do you convert feet to meters? Well, I have meters, 55. I want feet. And I have meters, yes? So what numbers go in there? So if I'm going feet to meters, one meter is 0.3, other way around, one foot, don't write this down please guys, because this is not right. This is what you guys are thinking. One foot is 0 0.3048 meters, correct? No. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, sorry. So this would convert it, wouldn't it? No. I just told you that it was wrong. Why is that wrong, Yunji? Well, what I did was like, I changed the three meters and five feet. You changed those to feet, yeah. so you got square feet here, didn't you? Does everybody understand what the problem is? If you change 55.4 meters squared and try to change it to feet this way, you're not going to get the right answer. Does anybody know why? Okay. If I convert it that way, I'm not going to get the right answer. Does anybody know why? Brianna. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You have to convert how many dimensions? Two. Here is what I mean. If I told you this square was one meter by one meter, what would the area in the middle be? One, because it's one times one, right? So this would be one meter squared, wouldn't it? So I want this in feet squared. So if you try to convert by 0 0.3048, you're not going to get the right answer, are you? Because according to that, one meter squared, one meter squared, I want feet, so 0 0.3048 over one. It would be one times 0 0.3048, wouldn't it? And that's not right. It can't be right, can it? And here is why. How long is this one meter Actually, I should have done this with feet. We're going to change this to feet. That'll be easier to do. So one foot, one foot, one foot. Everyone agrees, right? If I want this in meters, how far is this? 0 0.3048, isn't it? And how far is this? 0 0.3048. And how do I find out how many meters are in here? What do I do with those two numbers? Multiply them. So one foot isn't. 0 0.3048, one foot squared, isn't 0 0.3048, is it? It's 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 to get 0 0.0929 meters squared. Does everybody understand what just happened there? Why it's not 0 0.3048? Because I had to convert both dimensions. So if you did Yunji's version, Yunji's version, sorry, Kelly. No. <laughs> Sorry, Yunji. If you do Yunji's version, can you just leave the numbers? Like if she takes that three, right, and divides it by 0 0.3048, then she's going to get feet, isn't she? And if she does it there by 3048, she's going to get feet. And then if she does it there, she's going to get feet. And then she can just use those numbers, can't she? 
Her other option is to keep it as meters. And then you get 56.4 meters squared, right? But we don't want meters squared. What do we want? Feet squared. So I would still have to multiply by feet squared over meters squared. And we know that one foot is 0 0.0929 of a meter. So I have to do that divided by 0 0.0929. And that would give me square feet. It's not a straight across conversion once you add a second dimension. Does everybody understand what happened there? Everybody? Because it's really, really important in the world that you understand when you're measuring stuff, you have to convert all your measurements, not just the straight line ones. Everybody good? Would one more example be useful to you? Okay, let me give you another example on a completely separate sheet of paper. Nobody write this down. I just want you to pay attention because this is a really important concept to what we are speaking of right now. That is one meter. Everybody cool? How many centimeters is that? 100. So that is 100 centimeters. Agreed? Okay. How many millimeters is it? 1,000 millimeters. Is everybody cool? How many dimensions is that line? One, because it's a linear measurement, right? It's a straight line, agreed? Okay, now I'm going to take that <clears throat> and I'm going to make a square, which means how long is this side? One meter, which means how big is it in the middle? One meter squared, yes? Okay. Okay. How long is this side in centimeters? A hundred. So how big is this in the middle in centimeters? No. How do you find area? Length times width. Well, now I'm using centimeters times centimeters. What's a hundred times a hundred? 10,000 centimeters squared. Does everybody understand? What if I change to millimeters? What's a thousand times a thousand? A million millimeters squared. Does everybody get it? Even though it only goes up in factors of 10, once I add another dimension, it's got to go up. It's got to go up by 10 as well. Does everybody get it? Okay. You've got to remember you need to convert all your measurements if you're working in more than one dimension. Cool? Okay, let's go back to where we were. So anyway, you work it all out and you find out eventually that it is how much that we need to paint. It depends on how you did the question, right? So depending on your numbers, you end up with a surface area in feet squared, yes? Which you then have to divide by what? 300, right? And that's going to give you an answer. And because you have to buy paint by the gallon, if there's a decimal, no matter what that decimal is, even if it was 0.1, if it was 6.1, how many gallons do you got to buy? Seven. Seven. Because if you only buy six, you're not going to cover that last little bit. And even though it doesn't round up, you've got to buy that seventh gallon. That was the whole point of the question. Does everybody understand? I can't really mark it because everybody has done it a different way. How many people only painted the four walls? If you did the work at all. One person, two people. How many people painted the four walls in the ceiling? Three people. And TJ, we know, painted even the floor. He was sad. He painted his whole room blue. No, green. Green, I see. I painted my um, walls outrageous orchid. Oh, you outrageous orchid, did you? Just so you could be reminded to do your math homework every night? Did you make sure to do like a... No. Quote? It was in the... It was in the book, not my actual walls. I know. My actual walls. Did you? All right. Everybody cool? That was the point of that question. If you didn't do it, 
Well, then when it comes time to do questions like that on the quiz, you're not going to have practiced and you're probably not going to do very well on them, which means when it comes time to do it on the test, you won't have practiced and you probably won't do very well on them, which means you'll get not a very good grade, which is the grade you should get if you don't practice. Right? Right. Let us move on, cabbages. This is a personal favorite font of mine. If you look closely, you see no... You see that they are not even people. Well, yeah, they are people. It's called caricature. No, you don't see dead people. That's from the movie. That doesn't spoil the ending at all. I didn't spoil that. Even then, it says so right in the commercials for that movie, he sees dead people. Never mind. See? They're little people. Just wait. See? Yeah. I know, it's a cool font. In case you care, it's called caricature. Caricature. In case we care. <laughs> okay. Up until now, we have dealt with how many dimensions of measurement? Two. Three. Two. We started with? One. One. Linear measurement, right? Converting this from centimeters to inches, inches to feet, right? Then we move to how many dimensions? Two. No, TJ. Two, length and width. Or if it was a triangle, base and height. But base and height is still length times width, doesn't it? Huh? Now we're going to work up to the third dimension, which is volume. Surface area is two dimensions outside. If you take a shape and you flatten it, that's the surface area. Volume is how much space it takes up in the whole universe. Yes? All right. So we are going to talk about that right now. Volume is three dimensions. And again, we are going to start simply. We are going to start with prisms and pyramids, just like we started with surface area. Now, what did we decide was the makeup of a prism? And nobody say something stupid like, well, I think the prism uses, prism uses Maybelline. What, is the, what are prisms made up of? Triangles. Could be a triangle. One shape that does what? Repeats. Excellent. And Aiden gave us that excellent uh, uh, way to remember where the base shape and the height are. It was you, wasn't it? You said height is the line that's opposite from the base shape. I'm positive you did. I have it on video. I'm sure it was you. Anyway. So, no, we won't. So, Aiden has given us the definition that a prism is a shape which repeats to form a 3D figure, right? So we use this example. We started out with one sheet of paper, which was a rectangle, right? Two dimensions. And then if we stacked it on top of each other, we ended up with a prism. Yeah? If we took a circle and stacked it on top of each other, we ended up with a cylinder. Yeah? We all, we talked about that four or five days ago. Everyone's cool with that, right? Brienne? Yes. You start with a two-dimensional shape, and no matter what that shape is, if you stack it up, you get a prism. Everybody understand? Yeah. Okay. So let's start with this piece of paper right here. How much space does this piece of paper take up? Technically. The width, which is 11. The, or, sorry, the length, because it's the longer side, but that no, doesn't matter, is 11. And this is 8, yes? We're going to leave it as 8, because it's not quite 8.5. So this 
stuff that you can see is 88 inches square inches. Everyone agree? Because it's 8 inches by 11 inches. Cool with that? And how thick is it? We can't measure it, so we're going to call it one piece of paper. Does everyone agree? Does everyone agree? So this surface area is 88 square inches, but its volume is 88 square inches, and then it's one piece of paper thick. Cool? What happens if I had a second piece of paper? Is it still 88? Yes. But now it's not times one piece of paper, it's times how many? Two. Two. What happens if I add 598 pieces of paper? What do I get? 88 times how much? 588. Is everybody with me? So that is what volume is. Is everybody cool? Volume of a prism is simply this. It is the area of the base shape. Now, does the base shape need to be on the bottom? No. no. What do I mean when I say base shape? Where it starts, the foundation, the, the shape that builds our prism. Yes? Because if I turn this thing this way on my finger, where's the bottom? It's that one point where my finger is, which technically doesn't exist, does it? Everybody cool? All right. So we know it's the area of the base shape. And then what did I have to do with that area of the base shape for you to tell me that this was 598 pages? I multiplied by what? How thick it was. And what's the shorthand way we say for the distance from the base shape to the other base shape? We call that the height even if it's not the height. Does everybody understand? Right? So we call it the height, but we remember that the height is simply the measurement between, and my pen will write in a minute, between base shapes. Everybody understand? Everyone cool with that? It's easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, you guys are smart kids. If this is a prism, yeah? How does it differ from a pyramid? It's got different base. The base is different? The end is different. It starts, a pyramid starts with the same base, doesn't it? Still starts with that same rectangle down there, but what happens? It gets smaller and smaller. So let me ask you this. Would you rather have a prism-shaped thing filled with money or a, or a pyramid-shaped thing filled with money? Why? Prism has more volume. Now... You're absolutely correct, Jack. And you know how much I love lawyer ball, right? I love wasting 30 people's time with lawyer ball stuff like that, don't I? It's my favorite, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure you know that. Now, the rest of you, unlike Jack and Sam, are listening to the sarcasm dripping from my voice, yes? Yeah. Good. And you are all aware that lawyer balling will get you absolutely nowhere in here, yes? Excellent. That's when you do, you argue silly little technical points in a desire to waste class time and make yourself appear more intelligent. When obviously I do not mean that. Right? It confuses the issue, muddies the waters, and makes people not sure of what is going on. Kind of like how all of you agree to all the terms on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. And then complain when somebody puts a picture of your naked ass up on TV. Kind of like that. Because if you read all 56 pages of Lawyer Ball, you would be like, I have no idea what I'm agreeing to. Click, yes. I, just, like, the bottom and hit I know you do. Exactly. 
That's exactly what you all do. That's what those companies are banking on. That's why they have those there. So they can use your name and stuff in advertising and not pay you for it. Because once you put something on Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat, they own it. You don't anymore. So if you let someone take a picture of your junk and put it on there, that company owns it. So if you get super famous and they decide to say, oh, look what Jack Johnson, or sorry, Jack Anderson's junk looked like when he was 14, you are not allowed to stop them. But thank goodness, thank goodness that you were able to Snapchat that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, it does. And if you believe that, Jack, I have this lovely bridge over the Fraser River just over here. I have the deed. You could buy it right now and toll them if you want. Are you interested? Yes. Of course you are. Money's fun. Uh-huh. Okay. So, now back to the real stuff because Jashin was doing it right. He would rather have a prism full of money because the prism has more space. Now, as a matter of fact, it works out exactly. If you start from the same base and build a pyramid inside a prism from the same bottom, it turns out that pyramids have one-third the volume of their prism. What do I mean by their prism? Well, what is shared between a pyramid and a prism? The base. The base. So if a, its prism is base area times the height. But once you do it as a pyramid, you have to divide by three. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. Is everybody cool? All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to go back to the last five questions in our notes, which start on page 27, I believe. Just go back to page 27. I'm a, no, I was right on. And there is our first prism. Now, somewhere on this page, you should have a bit of white space. You don't need much because it's so easy. Since this shape is a prism, what do we know about the volume of every prism? We know that it's the area of the base times the height, yes? Now, who decides in this case what the base is? Does it matter? Yes, Nino? Of course you can, Nino, because it's 20 minutes into class and you go to the washroom every single day, 20 minutes into class, whether it's after lunch or not. That's your first time this week on Monday. Hope you don't have to go to the bathroom on Wednesday. Now I know you won't. I don't drink much water. Uh-huh. That's the second thing I like most after lawyer ball, stopping the class so you can ask to go to the bathroom. Shut up. I'm just saying, shut up. Where can I buy this book? The area of the base is up to you to decide in a prism, isn't it? Because if you make it the green, then you're going to do the area of the base, and that would make this the height, wouldn't it? If you make it the blue, then it's going to be this times this, and then that's going to be the height. If you make it the yellow, it's going to be that times that, and that's going to be the height, isn't it? So does it matter? No. So if we were going to do it green, it would be H times L, and then we would multiply by this W, wouldn't we? If we were going to use yellow, I'd have to do W times H and then multiply by the L, wouldn't I? Does it matter what order you multiply it? No. So the volume of a prism, we always teach you guys, is LWH. But there's a problem with teaching you that first 
because then you don't understand the concept that it's just the area of the base times the height. And when we change to a different shape, you get confused. So I like to make sure that you understand that it is whatever shape you start with times the height. Everybody cool? So what numbers go in here? 8, 24, and 40. Because order doesn't matter. And what do we get for an answer? You will do that on your calculator and find out what it is. It is 7,680 what? Centimeters cubed, because we have three dimensions. Everybody cool? All right. Let's move on to number two. So, yo. That just means that well, you left it with a syntax error when you turned it on, probably. Or you push the on button twice, and whatever, on, whatever your on button is has another function that it does. I'm going to just erase this stuff because I need a little more space for a second. It's a pyramid, yes? So how do I find the volume of every single pyramid? It's area of the base times what? the height, but since it's a pyramid, I got to divide by three, yes? So we know the pyramid that we have here is starting with 32 by 32, yes? So what's the base? 32 by 32. And what's the height? 65. And then what do I have to do with that whole number? Divide by three, not negative three, you idiot. Three. And what do you get for an answer? How do you punch that into your calculator? Everyone should be trying. You, will, you might get a decimal. Not necessarily. No, you don't always get a decimal. If you do 36 divided by 3, you get 12. No, that's not what I meant for this question. Yes, no matter what you do, you're going to get a decimal. And you're going to get 22,186.67. Yes, but then we would round off to 0.67 because it's a math class. Or, Sam, you can be feel free to continue to write 0.6 repeating until infinity because that's what it is. No, round it off to two decimal places. Round it off. All right. Everybody's cool with that one? Okay. These are real easy. You shouldn't be having any trouble with these. What is a cone? A pyramid or a prism? No. It's a pyramid. But instead of being based on a rectangle, it's based on a circle. Yes? So since it is the, still a pyramid, what's its volume? Area of the base times what? Height divided by what? Three. Now, since its base is a circle, what do I put there? Pi r squared, Pi r squared h divided by three. And what do I put in? What's my r? Fifteen. What's my h? Twenty-two. So it's fifteen squared times 22 times pi divided by 3. I don't want pi. That's why I'm leaving it written that way. So 15 squared times 22 is 4,950 pi's divided by what? 3. So then you get that answer and you get what? 1650 isn't a number, that's a price. 1650? Thank you. 1650 one, one, is four digits. 1650 pi. And that's how we're going to leave it.
Now, Jack, Jack, I'm glad this has happened to you because this is good calculator practice. Have you punched it in? Yes. What did you get? I got that, but it's because I incorporated pi. Right. Don't. Right? We leave pi out. Okay? Everybody good? Yeah. Brianna. We leave pi like that so we don't get a crazy, ugly decimal. That's the only reason. So then I, I don't have to answer the question. How many decimals do we round to? So. What's a cylinder? Prism or pyramid? Go to the bathroom, get a drink, whatever it is you need. A cylinder is a pyramid? So what's the volume of every prism? Area of base times the height. What's the base of a cylinder? Pi r squared times h. Pi, what's my r? 5 squared. What's my h? 20. What's 5 squared? 25 times 20 is 500 pi. Is everybody good with the easy ones? Oh, yeah. Is everybody good with the easy ones? Now, remember, what do I use the easy ones for? Why do I give you the easy ones? Brianna, pardon? To practice and to learn what? The numbers or the concept? The concept. What here is concept? I'm going to draw two lines. You tell me what concept is. You tell me which one are the, is the stuff that isn't important. Blue line, green line. Which is concept? Blue line. Which is important? No. The blue line. Because concepts are what always works. Do you understand? So, now I don't want anyone to write down the next thing I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to talk to your neighbor about it. Go to this page. You don't even need to go to this page. You just need to look at it. Here is a shape. Yes? Right here. Everybody with me? What would you do to tell me the volume of that shape? Talk to your neighbor. Yes. Remember, I don't want you to write anything down. I don't want an answer. I want you to tell me what you would do. Would anyone like to volunteer what they would do? Nolan, what would you do? Nolan says he would cut this right here, I would assume, and you would find the volume down here, which is LWH, yes? yes? Length times width times height. And then you would find the volume up here, which was LWH, yes? And then what would you do with those two numbers? You would add them. Would you have to care about overlaps? No. Why? Because it's volume. Why? What is, how does volume differ? It's the space inside, and you're not losing any of it, right? Yeah. Awesome possum. Now, why did you automatically cut it in half, Nolan? What, what made you say, I'm going to cut that in half, or I'm not cut it in half. I'm going to cut that. Why did you automatically do that? It's the first thing you thought of, because those are two perfectly easy to deal with prisms, aren't they? They're two rectangular prisms. So it's LWH, LWH, add them together. Duh, Myers. 
What's the concept that I just tried to teach you? What is the volume of every single prism? Every single prism is area of base times the height, yes? And where is the measurement for height? What is it between? In this case, it's four, right? Which, because this that I've just colored in green, isn't that the base area? Doesn't that, which is, the, of course, the shape of your favorite piece in Tetris? It is everyone's favorite piece in Tetris. If you try to argue there's a better piece than that in Tetris, A, you don't know how to play Tetris, and B, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. No, the line sucks. Yes, the line exists for one purpose only, to make a Tetris after you've used these to set it up on the side. Because if you drop a line right in the middle, you're screwed. Thank you, Tasha. I've already stopped listening to him. Now, four block is the second worst block in Tetris. What's the worst block? The two zigzags. Oh, yeah, those are the worst. Zigzags are useless. All right, now, so what did we, what was my point here? In this weirdly shaped prism, you don't need to do volume more than once, do you? Because if you can find that area of green, what would you multiply it by? Two. Two? Four. 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 Is everybody with me? So when you have a crazy shape, if you can find one of it, then you can just multiply by the height and you're in business. Everybody cool? So if we did Nolan's way, which is the way most people did that I was heard talking, then you would have done the bottom, which was 12 by 4 by 4, yes? which is 12 times 4 times 4, which is 192. So you would have done 12 by 4 by 4, right? That's length times width times height on the bottom. And then you would have added up here 4 by 4 by 4, yes? Because those are easy prisms to deal with, aren't they? So 12 by 4 by 4 is 192. 4 by 4 by 4 is 64. And then you would add them together to get 256, yes? Now watch what happens if you do my way. 12 by 4 is 48. 4 by 4 is 16. 16 and 48 is 64, right? Times 4 is 256. See how you get the same answer? And it comes into use when you are dealing with crazy shapes like this. Again, don't write it down. What would you do to find this volume? What could you do to find this volume? Could you find this volume and then this volume and then add it? Yes. Could you also find this area? and multiply by three. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Brianna. You, what I'm saying is, again, because these are nice regular shapes, that's not too hard, right? But what if I gave you this shape? Finding the volume of that would be difficult, wouldn't it? But finding this area and multiplying by 4 wouldn't be, would it? Well, you would make that rectangle, that triangle. Picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. A building? Yeah, right down beside, uh, just past the Port Man is the one I'm thinking of. There's one by Ikea that looks like this. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 that one. I know the one you mean. Yep, 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 yep. Just between Castle Fun Park and Sumas. Yep. Everybody with me? 
Because this is a prism, if you can find this and multiply by that, you're in business. Everybody cool? Now, let me ask you this. What would you do with this one? There's a third way to figure out that volume. There's Nolan's way. Cut it. Or you could cut it here, right? What's the second way? You could find this area and multiply by what? Six for going backwards. Can anybody think of a third way that you could do that particular shape? Make it one big shape. Make it one big shape. And then figure out the volume for that and then multiply by three fourths. Multiply by three fourths? Yeah. Why three fourths? Because this has been cut into four, yes? Good. Could you find the area of the whole big thing and then subtract out that little part if it wasn't a perfect fraction? Yes, excellent. That's kind of the point of where I'm going with this. Everybody cool? What's the concept? Base area times the height, no matter what. If I gave you an octagonal prism, how would you find the volume? Brianna. Yeah, you'd find this shape and multiply by what? That, because that's the height. Everybody with me? No matter what. Everybody cool? Because every prism is the base shape times the height. Yeah? Excellent. Oops, I don't want to do that yet. So you guys have, for me, we are not going to do spheres today. You are skipping to page 35, and you are going to work on 1A, 1B. All right. No, no, no. 1A and B, and I want surface area and volume. And then you are going to do 2A and B, but for 2A and B, I just want volume. That's your job. You have the rest of this class to do so.